Let's begin this chapter on 3ds Max materials by opening a scene. It's an interior scene that refers to panel 4 in our storyboard. Go to the Application button, click Open in the drop-down menu, and navigate to the Chapter 4 subdirectory inside of our Scenes directory. Open up the file called Chapter 4 Interior Material 01.max. This is a scene with objects in an interior lab shot that we're going to apply some materials to. We're going to increment this file, click on the Application button, click Save As from the drop-down menu. In the Save File As dialog, click the Increment button. This will increment the file to Chapter 4 Interior Material 02.max. Materials are created in the Material Editor. We now have the option to use the Compact Material Editor, which is the traditional material editor that has been in 3ds Max since release 1. Or we can use the Slate Material Editor, which is the new Schematic Material Editor. For this exercise, we're going to use the Slate Material Editor. To access it, move your cursor to the main toolbar, click on the Material Editor icon, and hold the left mouse button. In the flyout, click the lower option, which is the Slate Material Editor, it has a different icon than the Compact Material Editor. Since we're using Mental Ray as our renderer, we're able to use the Arch and Design material in our scenes. However, if you decide to use the Compact Material Editor, the Arch and Design material is the default material for each material slot in the Material Editor. The Arch and Design material is a good general material because it allows a lot of input and it is a relatively efficient way to create materials using this material type. The first thing we need to do is open up the Mental Ray rollout inside the Materials rollout. Go ahead. If the Materials rollout is closed, click on the plus to the left-hand side of the rollout to open it. Now we can drag and drop the Arch and Design material into our work area. The first thing we want to do is name the material. Go ahead and double-click on the title bar of the Arch and Design material that we just added to the workspace. This brings up the Attributes in the Attributes window. For this particular Arch and Design material, in the Name type in, highlight the Name field, and let's type in Paint underscore Red. Press Return to accept the name change. The reason why I'm naming this with Paint first and not the color first is that when I build a library and I look at my materials, I'll be able to see all of my paint materials grouped together. There is a shader associated with this material called the Color Shader, the Diffuse Color Shader. It allows us to specify what color the material is going to be. You can see that the default color is gray. If we look at the Material Sample window on the left side of the Shader node title bar, you'll notice that it's also gray. We want to change this to a bright red material color for this particular paint material. Click on the Color Swatch in the Main Material Parameters rollout of the Diffuse Color. This will open a color selector dialog. Now, whether you choose your colors using RGB value sliders or the hue saturation and value sliders, it doesn't really matter. All the methods of choosing your color in the color selector work together. So you can work in any one of these three color areas. It's really whatever works best for you. What we'll do is click in the hue area and drag the mouse all the way to the left hand side. That gives me a hue value of 0, which happens to be a red hue. Then, to make it completely saturated, we'll drag the saturation slider all the way to the right. The saturation determines the amount of color in the final color. So a value of 0 will have no color, and if the slider is dragged all the way to the right, it will be a pure, fully saturated color. Now we'll take the slider and drag it about 3 fourths of the way to the right-hand side so that in this case it would be a value of approximately 0.75. This will give us a nice saturated red that's not too bright. Again, whether you're entering numeric values or adjusting the slider, it's completely up to you. Click OK to accept the color. Notice the sample window in the active material changes to reflect the new color that we have assigned to this material. We've just added some input into the diffuse shader of the arch and design material. It's now a material called Paint Underscore Red and is ready to be applied to objects in our scene. The last thing we'll do before saving the scene is to place this newly created material into one of our sample slots so that we can recall this material easily at a later time. Again, in the Slate Material Editor, this is done using a drag and drop technique. 
In the Material Map Browser window, click the plus to the left of the sample slots rollout. You'll see several predefined materials that are the default materials available in 3ds Max. And you have a horizontal scroll bar across the bottom and a vertical scroll bar on the right hand side which allows you to navigate around in the sample slots rollout. In order to place the current material in one of the slots, click on the output of the Arch and Design Material node and click and drag your mouse on top of one of the sample slots in the sample slot rollout. Then release the mouse button. As you're dragging, you should see a red line follow your mouse. If you didn't, then try clicking and dragging again. When you release the mouse, a dialog will appear that is asking you which method you would like to use when adding the material to the material slot. In this case, we want to use the instance method, so make sure that instance is selected and click OK. That adds our red paint material to the sample slots. So when we save our file and reopen it, that material will still be there for further editing or for us to apply to objects in our scene. Press Ctrl S to save the scene.